Hi. Can I have a medium double double and a Boston cream? Thank you. Hello YouTubes, welcome back to Scott Reels. Before we get started, I want to clarify a couple of things. First of all, this is not a video about bashing MagnaRail. It's a great system and it's actually reasonably priced, but by the time you add on VAT and shipping to Canada, it becomes too expensive. So until they start distributing in Canada and the USA, I don't think I'll be able to afford MagnaRail. As I say, it's a great system. One day I'd love to have a set. Second thing I'd like to clarify, this idea that I'm going to show you is not my idea. I got this from Diorama Don. Link up there. He came up with this idea as far as I can see, and it looks great. But I'm going to put it to the test today, and hopefully we'll have some moving traffic on our layout. So let's see what we need to make this dream come true. First thing we need is a standard bicycle chain. Now, obviously, you're only going to have enough room for that sort of size of moving vehicle system. But you can get more bicycle chains, chains and just extend that as much as you'd like. Next, you will require some bicycle derailer jockey wheels these are called they're just small gears designed for moving your gearing on your bicycle from high gear to low gear but they should work just fine obviously we don't want too much mechanical stuff taking up space in the layout so these will be ideal as long as they fit which they do these are the right size if this works i will of course provide a link to amazon where i got all this stuff so let's go for a basic design for now. I've got a pack of 10 of these. So let's go with one in each corner. Then for a bit of variation and also to help tension the chain, we'll put one there pushing it down the way and there pushing it up the way. Next, we require a method to power the chain. I've sourced a fairly inexpensive 12 volt DC motor, which is reversible and speed adjustable. Again, I'll provide the link. So this is going to have to come up through the bottom of this board. This is just a temporary test board I've sourced. So I can sacrifice this, but hopefully this will work. And I will need to adapt one of these jockey wheels to fit this. Not quite sure how I'm going to attach it. I'll probably just super glue it for now. I could possibly drill a hole through here no, that wouldn't work. Anyway, I'll come up with an idea, but as I say, for now, I'm just going to have to enlarge the hole inside this. These I've got, they're not exactly bearings in the inside. They're just little steel collars, presumably stainless steel collars, with a washer and a screw and a bolt going through, like so. So what I'll do is I'll take this out, the little collar, I'll drill this out a little bit bigger so that that will slide Oh, <laughs> it fits perfectly. That's uncanny. Okay, I need to just find a way of attaching this so that when the motor turns, this doesn't just spin. So that will get mounted under the board and that's going to be my power. How am I going to power it though? Well, everything's on a budget here. So I'm just going to use one of these DC... Let's see what we've got here. We've got 6 volts to 18 volts adjustable on your, your, your old school DC uh, model railway controller. And that should work just fine. Well, hopefully, we'll find out soon. And finally, to attach the cars to this chain mechanism, I'm going to use some of these rare earth magnets. I don't know what's rare about them. I got these for like $10. And there's loads of them in the box. So one of these will get attached to the chain. And one will get attached to the underside of the cars. And then I'll cover the whole lot with a sheet of card. Like that. And I'll draw some road markings on it for now. 
Now this is just very, very thin card. I'm not sure how thick I'm going to be, get, be able to get away with because I don't want the, the whole road system buckling every time a car goes around it. Anyway, that's the theory. I suppose we better get started with the construction. I think I'm just going to keep this simple since this is really just a proof of concept project I'm doing just now and we'll just make a square. Now these three will be fixed in place. This fourth one where the motor will be, I'm going to elongate the hole that I drill so that I can stretch that out to tension the chain. So we won't actually be using the little screws and nuts. I'm just going to take these out. I will use the, the washers, however, because that keeps it all nice and tight. You can screw that right down and the cog will still turn. So that will go there, screwed into the board. And the same with those two. This one obviously is going to take a bit more work. So let me get that done first. So far so good. So I need to work out how I'm going to attach this to that little cog. For now I'm going to just try and wrap some insulating tape around the end, sort of taper it around so the, the more I ram it in the tighter it gets. I'll try it for now. Because it's just a small section of chain it shouldn't have too much pressure I'm trying to turn it but I'll give it a shot. And then obviously I need to make some sort of bracket for the underside for it attached for it to attach to. But for now, it's just a test. I'll rest it on top of some foam and hold it by hand so it doesn't spin around. Obviously, I'll need to wire it up as well, but we're nearly there. It was pretty easy so far. Right, let's get on. Okay, the tape thing's not going to work. It needs to be something a bit more permanent. It's not even going to work for test purposes, which is frustrating. Right, let's see what I can come up with. Right, here's what I've come up with. I have cut a little groove using a angle grinder, but I'm sure you can you can use a Dremel for that, right? And then I've cut a corresponding groove in there. So that will slip over there, line up the grooves. And I've just got a little, just a little wood nail that I've cut down. Put an, another point on it so that uh, when it meets the bottom of the, the groove there, it will start expanding and push out the, the cog onto the wheel. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it'll do for now for testing purposes and I will improve it. At a later stage. I didn't want to make it too tight because I'm going to have to obviously take this off and put it on the actual layout. But that should be enough to hold it in place. Right, onward. Push this up the hole, put some support underneath. It's not going to need to be that high, but let's get this on first. That goes on there. Lower it down to the right height. A bit there. Should have put the chain on first. Like so. 
so. Okay, seems a bit tight. Something is not, something's not lining up right. I think I'm going to have to take more care with the distance between the cogs. Otherwise it's going to uh, foul up. Oh no, this is misbehaving. Get back in. Right. Hey, it's a, it's a learning curve. So I do need to, I need to work out exactly where the cogs need to go. What I can do for now is take these out, elongate the holes, and then tighten the back up when we're in the right spot. So let me do that, and then we'll get on with some wiring of this motor. Okay, positioning of the free running cogs shouldn't make any difference because they can rotate and adjust to wherever the groove, you know, where the, the notch in the chain needs to be. So that is not the issue. I think the issue is that they are not supposed to lie flat. They're supposed to lie up and down. Well, not lie, but you know what I mean? They're supposed to be vertical. So what I think I'll need to do is make some, oh, what's that stuff? It's not plastic. It's that white stuff that is used for, well, chain guides, basically. I need to get some channeling to lift that off the, the surface because it's obviously dipping down and then having to climb back up to get onto the cog. So it, it's going to be a bit noisy until I sort that out. Just a little layer of, oh, what's it called? Polyurethane. Just to lift it up a little bit. Anyway, let's get this wired up and see if it even works. I'm just going to hook up these two wires to the DC power unit for the, you know, the old school train thing. Let's, let's do that. Now, I know you're all just blown away by my knowledge of the English language and my terminology. Give me a break. I'm doing my best. These are not the best idea for wiring connections. Again, I should have a, a little grooved spady thing. Oh, again with the terminology. You get the idea. It's temporary. Doesn't really matter which way around these go. There is a direction button on this controller. There. Okay, I just need to plug this in and then obviously I'm going to have to hold that, but I'll let you see what it's like from up top. Okay, we are plugged in. Let's see if it works at all. Wish me luck. Here we go. Fast. Let's try it the other way. Bit fast and a bit noisy. Now, again, I think that's because there's too much resistance trying to pull the pull the chain round off the floor. It also could be that the the power unit I'm using is just a wee bit too old and uh, lost its sensitivity. Oh, that's fair. If I, put, if I put a bit less tension on the chain, it goes around nice. Oh, I've also noticed there's a... There's a buckle happening where the chain joins, so that's maybe a wee bit tight. Yeah, once everything's in place and secure where it's supposed to be, namely this, this is the biggest problem is the motor because it's not tightened down at all. I'm just holding it underneath.
Needs a bit of work. Right, let me try and fine tune this for a wee while and see if I can make it work a little bit better than, than that. Right, I figured out what I need to do. I need to put a small bit of card or polyurethane underneath each section of chain just to raise it up because it's actually fouling as it tries to join each sprocket, jockey wheel, whatever. Because it can run nice and slow. But it is definitely, I can feel it through the motor that it's getting caught up in every jockey wheel because it's having to go down and then back up again. That's going to work. Okay, the next step then is going to be how do we attach the cars to the chain? Let's do that now. So these tiny magnets, one will get attached to the link of the chain and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark with black which way up they should be otherwise if I get the polarity wrong then it's not going to work okay so black at the top I'll probably super glue these on but they're pretty strong it might stay in place by itself you might see a problem here there's a bit of a height problem this screw here and that washer is actually a fair bit higher than that magnet. So I can replace that washer with a thinner one possibly or just use a flush mount screw and it should bring it down to the right height just below this. I don't really want this scraping along whatever I put on top. So let me glue this one to the underside of a victim a uh, car. This part of the operation is rather fiddly. I need to attach one of these tiny magnets to the front. As near to the front as possible, otherwise when it went round a corner, it would kind of go round like that rather than that. You know, and you want the pivot point as near to the front as possible. Now, what I did notice was if I attach this magnet to the front, it's going to hang down too much. And I want the front wheels to turn as well as the back. So I'm going to have to drill a tiny hole. Ah, try not to lose my fingers here. Yeah, I should use a smaller drill, but ah, this is what I've got. I'm not using my favourite car, by the way. I'm just using a car. Well, quite a thick chassis in this little guy. It is German, mind you, so that explains it. You don't need a huge amount of pressure. It's plastic and I'm using a metal drill bit, so it should be easy. Right, let's see if I've ruined it. Yeah, just a little bit. I think I drilled through where it attaches. Still, that's what super glue's for, right? So, this magnet should now pop in. I'll test it first and then if it works, I will super glue around it. Oh, you know what? You should really get non magnetic tweezers for this job. It'd make life a whole lot easier. Or get a child to help. Children have got small fingers. Okay, I've not made my hole quite big enough. Let me do a little bit more drilling. I decided to go smaller than bigger because you can always drill out more. You can't undrill, you know what I mean? Right, let's go a little bit deeper. Not deeper, wider. Yes, that's going to slot in nicely now. 
perfect. Of course, I would have liked to have put glue in there first. Still, I can glue around the edge, I'm sure it'll be fine. And if it's not, then I can take it apart and do it again. Right, next. Well, I'm glad I didn't glue that magnet in place. Because it was forward of the front wheels and the magnets are so powerful, it was actually it was actually sitting like that, going along the surface. So what I've done is I've drilled another hole just behind the front axle, put the magnet in there. Also, this little DC power supply is just not strong enough. It's got an internal fuse and once it overheats, it cuts off. So I've plugged in my big double DC power unit. This is a very noisy unit. It's quite old. It buzzes like mad even when I'm running trains. But it works. The motor has been absolutely fine. I've not had any issues with that. So I can definitely use a more powerful DC unit. But these things, they're only like $20 from a, for a swap meet. And as you can see, I've got the board on place. I'm actually going to try the... What is that? It's about 4 mil thick styrofoam board. As I say, the magnets are really powerful, so I think we'll be okay. But first, let's draw some road markings on it, make it a bit more realistic-like. Close enough. Are you ready to be stunned by my brilliance? Get your earplugs, it's pretty loud, but we will work on that, okay? back in the road. Told you it was loud. We've obviously got a ways to go before this is working properly. The main thing I need to try and figure out is how to tension the chain without putting too much pressure on the motor. My wife's already suggested a couple of things. Basically double sprocket it at the motor so that the, the chain is getting tensioned without putting that pressure on the motor. The motor isn't even mounted properly, remember. We've got the shaft coming up through the wood so it's just rubbing against wood. There's no bearing there at all. So the noise is caused by the chain rattling on the on the surface. So if we can get enough chain, 
If we get enough tension to lift the chain off, and then that will also align the chain better. It's all about the tension, right? Anyway, that's part one. Proof of concept, and I think it's going to work. But obviously a bit more R&D is required. I will make sure to notify you when the next update is live, but only if you click subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching. I think that worked.